Well, hello out there. This is Dr. Helga Alexi from the cardio team and I will show you in the next uh, couple of minutes a little solution or explanation video of the case we just showed you. Why does this heart stop beating? Well, it was a 60 year old male. I was um, called from the nurse. She just um, took the vitals from the patient at her station and she had measured a um, heart rate of about 166 at this patient. The other vitals were pretty normal. The blood pressure was normal, oxygen saturation was okay. He had normal body temperature. And when I attended to the patient and asked him what, what his um, symptoms are, he said, well, doc, I'm perfectly fine. I have no symptoms. No dyspnea, no chest pain, um, no pain at all, didn't feel bad at all, no palpitations or something like this. And the um, diagnosis history of the patient was very weak too. He um, had no um, coronary heart disease in the past, no myocardial infarction, no arrhythmias. I, checked his pulse. It was indeed a very tuggy card uh, pulse I felt, very regular. And after that I took the first ECG strip from the patient. And this is what you can see in the next slide. So the ECG I was uh, first confronted with when I saw the patient or at bedside. Um, thoroughly, I don't have the chest leads, only extremity leads, but I think they will do for looking at the rhythm of the patient. Look at this ECG, look if you see any P waves, ST segment, elevations or depressions, anything in particular special. What do you think is the underlying rhythm here? And afterwards I'll show you the first bedside echo I performed with the patient and after that the first quiz with possible answers. Well let me show you the echo. A fast heart rate is a regular heart rate as we could see in the ECG. The chambers look normal, maybe the right chamber is a bit bigger than the left one, shouldn't be that way but it's not extraordinary and if you measure the, the diameter of the RV, it was a normal range. The aortic valve, we only get a very, very um, superficial look on it, but it seems to open normally. And we don't have pericardial effusion here or something like this. That was the first echo. Well, now I'll show you the possible answers to the underlying rhythm. ABRT, atrioventricular reentry tachycardia. B, atrioventricular node reentry tachycardia, AVNRT. C, atrial flutter two to one. D, sinus rhythm. Or E, none of the above. Well, take your time to choose. And afterwards, I give you the answer what it was. Okay, I think you all made your choice, so I think the most of you would have answered this. AVNRT is the most common uh, underlying rhythm if you're seeing those patients a little bit older, no P wave seen, and especially at that heart rate of 166, because C, atrial flutter, you can have this heart rate, of course, but it's a little bit fast for normal atrial flutter 2 to 1. You very often have these patients in a range between, well, 115 and 140, I would dare I say. So, what would be an appropriate therapy for this patient in this situation? Do you think, A, it would be a medurone? B, DC shock, C, Valsalva maneuver, D, 
digoxin or e adenosine well take your time and choose Okay, I give you the solution what for me were the um, right or appropriate therapies in this situation. And I think the most of you will agree that uh, answer C and E would be an appropriate therapy for salva maneuver and adenosine. The for salva maneuver is a good option for a bedside therapy. So you can give the patient something very cold to drink or something like this to increase the um, vagotonus so the heart rate slows down and maybe the arrhythmia stops and is terminated the heart rate deteriorated and went to 140 or something like this but after a little while when the um, effect on the vagotonus uh, took place and ended the heart rate was back at 166. So we also um, let the patient blow through a, a syringe to increase vagotonus, but um, the same as with the um, cold water drinking. And then after that, I decided to administer the patient adenosine IV. Before doing this, I took the patient uh, to a monitoring to the ICU in this um, in this case let us know if you see it the same way if you would have administered uh, adenosine at the bedside or would you have chosen to to monitor the patient um, at this p p procedure you with adenosine you are performing a complete AV block with this uh, drug and when you administer Anzin, it takes effect after some seconds and it also ends its effect after a couple of seconds. So you don't have very uh, long time to expect any effects from Anzin. That is a very, very nice uh, thing of this drug. but. I personally um, always prefer to um, only administer IV this uh, drug on a, a monitor setting, for example, the ICU. But let us know how you would have done that and post that in the comments below. Okay, so this is the ECG we saw when I was um, administering the IV adenosine, and I let the nurse push the ECG button when I was administering it and this is what we saw. In this part of the ECG, again only the extremity leads, we see the tibia coming from here with 166 beats per minute. Then the effect of the adenosine takes uh, place and we see a pause. Then here a P wave with a very broad QRS complex, very different looking to the others coming from here. Then again a pause, that is what you saw on the video we uh, showed you. This stopping of the heartbeat or these pauses of the heartbeat and what you can see here as an escape beat maybe a fusion beat because you see this P wave here and here and here also in lead one. Very good to see and clear to see the P waves. But I think this P wave is so short before the QRS complex it um, doesn't have any conduction um, effect to the uh, ventricle and this is a, a pure escape beat. This looks a bit different, uh, not so deep and this could be a fusion beat. This could be a fusion beat where the adenosine takes uh, not so much effect anymore um, and already let the AV node conduct some of the atrial stimuli. The PQ interval is very short here, a little bit longer here, so 
this might be a fusion beat. And then you see the P wave here, the next one here, and here's a very narrow, again very narrow QRS complex that looks very similar to the first complexes. So this is a normal, um, normally conducted beat from the sinus node with still effect in the AV node uh, from the adenosine. So you have an AV block one here. AV block one, the PQ interval is longer than 200 millim uh, milliseconds. And this is an AV block one, but conducted um, beat. This as well, this is conducted, AV conducted, uh, AV block one beat and so on. If you see the last QRS complex on this ECG strip, you see that this beat looks different again. And this is probably again a fusion beat. A fusion beat um, because the Edison has not terminated its effect completely. It still has some effect on the AV node and this is probably a fusion beat. Looks very similar to this one. And this is how it looked in the echo. If I start the, the video, you see the adenosine flushing in from the right atrium over the tricuspid valve into the right uh, ventricle. And then after some beats, it takes effect here. The AV node is now blocked. And what you see are the escape beats we just saw in the ECG. There the, he the heart stops beating. It's a long pause. And that is the wanted effect with which we want to terminate the AVNRT because this re-entry cycle um, is terminated when the AV node is blocked and don't let the stimulus um, over the AV node into the ventricle. So again, we see the flush from the adenosine into the right atrium, into the right chamber, and then the saline flush to get the last, here you see the saline flush to get the last adenosine into the right heart and now it takes effect and stops or slow first slows and then stops the heartbeat and the conduction so only uh, the escapes escape beats are coming through so when we saw this in the ecg and the echo and compare that we can very good see what uh, takes effect on the conduction system and in the contractility and the heart action after that, we recorded the, the ECG further, and this is the last beat you uh, saw on this, on this strip here, this fusion beat probably here, and then you see the effect of the uh, Edison gets weaker and weaker on the AV node. So all these P waves here, are then normally conducted. At this speed, we still have AV block one, but then the PQ interval becomes normal. Becomes normal, it's not over 200 milliseconds um, anymore, and every P wave is normally conducted to the ventricles, and we have this these narrow QRS complexes here. So we terminated the arrhythmia of the AV node AVRT with adenosine because Valsado Nova didn't work in this case. Afterwards, I performed another echo on the bedside, on the ICU, from the subcostal view. And this is uh, what we were seeing then. The heart is beating very regular again, much slower than we had in the initial echo. And that was the final result we terminated the AV NRT with adenosine and reconstituted the normal sinus rhythm. So, thank you for your attention. I hope you liked this little solution or explanation video for the last case we showed you and you got some background about the echo loop we showed you and the patient the loop was taken from. I also hope you learned something about the approach and therapy of arrhythmias 
and I would be very interested in your thoughts about it. Would you have had the same approach? Would you have used the same drugs? Um, would you have performed full server maneuver? Let us know in the comments uh, in the comment section under this video. Very interested in that. Let us discuss the different approaches one could have had. Would you have performed this procedure on the ICU? Would you have put the patient on uh, monitoring as I did in this uh, situation? Or would you have done the whole procedure on the bedside at, uh, at the patient? Well, let us know this, let us discuss this and if you like the video, give us your thumbs up, maybe subscribe to your channel if you don't want to miss any further videos of cardiological quizzes and cases we'll upload in the future. And that's it for now. Yours, Dr. Helga Alexi and the cardio team. Bye bye.